Hello and welcome. This is a slightly different video than you'll be used to seeing on my channel. Today we're going to change the front brakes on my girlfriend's car. She wanted me to show you that. Alright, uh, here's some tools that you'll need. Don't be discouraged, you don't need everything here. All you really need is 18 mil wrench, a 12 mil wrench, a 12 mil socket if you can't get it with the wrench. Uh, and, you know, that's basically it. Oh, you also need a C-clamp. And if you have a tire wrench, use that. If you don't, it's a 19 millimeter socket. And for to make this easier for myself, I've got that on a drill. So I'll crack them loose with this, then do the rest with the drill. And if the bolts aren't coming loose, I'll use some WD-40. And if it's everything is greasy underneath, I'll use some degreaser and some blue towels and maybe this wire brush to clean it up. And if the bolts are really tight, we can use that hammer to hammer them loose. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> first things first, we gotta use a drill, make this easier on ourselves, and take off those take off that cover. Oh. Next step is to use a tire wrench or a 19 millimeter socket and bust those loose. You might want to stand up for this because they're hard. Here's here's a you can do this one of two ways. From this point you can push that down or you can flip that handle over and pull it up. The benefit to pulling it up is that if you slip off the bolt while you're pushing it down, you'll smash your knuckles into the ground. There we go. If they're really tight, you can use your foot and stand on it. Success. After you're done breaking the nuts loose, step three is to jack up the car. This jack is made specifically for this vehicle. It just goes right underneath. I didn't know that was a thing. Yep. Does every car have a special jack? Some cars come with generic ones, and some vehicles have ones made specifically for them, and then you have jacking points underneath each corner. Some car jacks allow you to MacGyver it where you can stick a socket on the end, and instead of doing this for 20 minutes, you can just spin it up. All right, the tire's coming up off the ground here, so we'll just give it a few more turns. Step four is to use a drill, make our lives easier, and bust out those nuts. These nuts. There we go. Step five, remove the tire. Lay it down so you can sit on it. <laughs> All right, now the other side was kind of a and so we're going to WD-40 that and let it sit for several minutes. There's a top bolt, which is 12 millimeters, and a bottom bolt, which is 12 millimeters. And then there's that one right here, which is 18 millimeters. So you have to hold this one with a wrench while you undo that one. I always thought it was to make things not squeak. WD-40 is an all-purpose penetrating oil slash lubricant and usually does the trick for a brake job. Okay, step something is now we're going to use a 12 mil socket and an 18 mil wrench and see if we can bust those loose. Oof. You got it? If it makes life easier, use this wrench. Oh, I like this much better, yeah. I think you're tightening it. And when it's too loose to do with the wrench, we'll just do the rest by finger. Next step, once we've got those bolts out and anything else holding it in place, we'll use this pry bar, that's conveniently a tire wrench, and try and get these off. Sometimes they can be pretty stuck on, so we'll just get in there however we can. Okay. Oh, she's coming! So once that's off, typically we don't like to leave these things hang. So we'll just put it up on top, like that. And then the brake pads will come right out. Now on this side, they're completely gone. There's absolutely nothing left. Oh no. If you take a look at the new ones, you can, you can see the difference. Okay, maybe it was a little bad. <laughs> and this side's even worse. This is the side that was grinding on us. You can see it was metal on metal there, which yeah. is which is not a good thing. Is the router really fucked up on this one? Judging by how this feels on the back side, it's probably fine. 
Now that this is a little bit greasy and dirty, we'll just scrape it clean. Try to get inside here where the brakes mount. These particular brakes come with new ones of these clips, but these ones are in good shape, so we don't need to replace them. Next step is to push back the piston. This here is your brake fluid reservoir. You can tell because it says dot three, which is typically a brake fluid. And you've got a minimum and a, a minimum and a maximum line. Now when you when you use a C-clip to put back the uh, the piston, typically you would take this this off to allow you to do that more smoothly. I don't think it's required. It's up to you if you want to go ahead and take that off as you put the piston back. But before you go and take the car out for a drive, make sure you put that lid back and make sure you're topped up. You see we have to add some to put it to max. You can imagine now that there's nothing left on these brake pads, the piston is now stuck in somewhat of a closed position so that when you put the new brake pads on, they won't slide over top. So what you have to do is take your old brake pad, put it over top of the piston like that and get a C-clamp. Get it on here. To make this easier for ourselves, we'll use this wrench and stick it over the end for added leverage. You see that piston going in? That's a good thing. Push it in as far as it can go. Okay, that's as far as it goes. Take off the clamp. Okay, next step, before you put that one on, for those of you who don't know, this piece of metal, that's silver, when your brakes get low, that's what makes them squeal. It serves as a warning device so you don't chew up your rotors. On this car, it goes on the front side, and they slide into these grooves here. After you got the new pads in, you can just drop the new the caliper on right over top. And then you put the bolts in, shake it around until you find the hole. There we go, I think. Yep. Felt it click. And then we'll tighten them down. Once that's tight, all you have to do is put the tire on and lower the car. Once you got the tire on, we're going to use drill, make it easy for ourselves, and spin them on in a crisscross pattern. <laughs> crisscross pattern ensures the tire doesn't go on crooked. Oh, let's get oh. that one some more. Good eye. Now do them all again. Now we just let the car down, tighten them up with that wrench. If you have a torque wrench, now would be a good idea to set the torque. But if you don't have a torque wrench, you just put a little bit of your body weight on it. So once you've done them all in a crisscross pattern, you just go around the world. These are just plastic, so if you're using an impact drill, don't go too hard because you'll just break them off. And that pretty much concludes changing the brakes on your car. So as you can see, it's fairly easy to do your own brake job. It can save a lot of money, learn a few things. You just need basic tools, and you're good. Got brand new brakes. Now what you would do is take it out for a spin, make sure everything works, nothing is leaking or broken. It's a good idea to recheck the torque every now and again. In a few days, get out your wheel wrench, check the torque, make sure they're not loose. Because if your tire comes off and it's loose, well, that's bad news bears. So thank you for watching this video. And so further news, I'll see you later. Still working on the Rover One. I'm gonna get uh, some stickers that say hashtag Rover One Project and the YouTube logo and you know my, my YouTube handle. And that way it's advertising as I drive this thing around. Thank you for teaching me. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks for driving by every time I film, f***ers. Did you hear that? Are they gone? <sighs> no! <laughs>